Uh, one of the things I like most about uh, your show is you give context to stories that I don't feel like get covered a lot, not yeah. just on late night shows, but even on new shows uh, here yeah. in the States. Uh, uh, there are obviously the Prime Minister in India, yes. uh, Prime Minister Modi, and yes. he was here, and Donald Trump went to this rally. To open for Modi. Yeah. It's, it's a big so deal. Yeah. That, so explain that, because it certainly seems surreal to me to watch uh, President Trump oh, holding hands with another man just sort of walking through a And stadium. they were full on swinging. Yeah. It's like, uh, it was a strange thing to see, but... For those of you who don't know, you know, Prime Minister Modi had, had sold out Energy Stadium where the Texans play in Houston. 50,000 plus people showed up. And then Donald Trump was like, I'll open. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I gotta go. This yeah. is like the Jay-Z and Beyonce of ethno-nationalism. Yeah. <laughs> like, imagine a J&B concert, but with no white or black people <laughs> and no coolness at all. <laughs> and so I was like, I gotta be there. So you went, you decided this is the perfect thing for our show to cover. Yeah, yeah because I, I knew that like what, what Modi pulled off, I mean, this is a political gangster. A lot of people in the Indian community don't rock with Trump, but mm -hmm. because of this weird pairing, they just had to stand for DJT. Yeah. Yeah, like, imagine if you got Ed Sheeran tickets, free. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sold out Energy Stadium. And then a week before, they were like, special guest, Bill Cosby. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, all right, you got a monster. Yeah. But then I really want to hear Shape of You. And all yeah. the aunties and uncles were like, I got to do Shape of You. Got it, yeah. they want to yeah. you. Uh, so you go down there. I go down there. Well. I was like, I have to be there. So we submit our press credentials. Immediately get an email back. They're like, we're out of space. I'm like, word? Like, I've been to Indian weddings. You just walk in. <laughs> yeah. You're out of space in a football stadium. No. So I reach out to the organizers. I'm like, hey, come on. This is my community. You guys get it. Like, I want to I wanna be there. And they're like, we're out of space, but we're discussing. Oh, my goodness. I'm like, eh? And if you've ever done field pieces, you know that you got to show up and, you know, be a, yep. a good faith actor and they'll yep. take care of you. Right, right. So I show up to the press table that morning and they're like, Mr. Minhaj, we are out of space and you've been denied because of some of the comments you have made. Wow. And I'm like, I'm sorry for making fun of cricket. It's not <laughs> just a sport for fobs. It's an international game yeah. that is taking over the world. They're like, no, the comments you have made about Prime Minister Modi were not appreciated, and you've been blacklisted. Wow. And I was like, dude, you're treating me like Indian Jorge Ramos. <laughs> this is Trump 101. Yeah. And I'm in Texas, so you guys pretty much think I'm Jorge Ramos. So but, I'm in the parking lot, yeah. and I'm just watching this whole thing on live stream while I'm looking at the stadium. And I'm watching the program, and during the program, they're honoring prominent Indian Americans. Indian Americans have done so much in arts, music, even comedy. And then they show a photo of me on the Jumbotron, <laughs> and people start clapping. So, so you understand what's happening. I'm, so this, and we do have a photo of where you were when you were watching. I'm that. in the parking lot. <laughs> so they were honoring me for my comedy while also blackmailing me and blackballing me and kicking me out from my comedy. It was the most Indian thing ever. They were like, <laughs> we're proud of you, but we'll never say it to your face. <laughs> it, um, tore me, it tore me apart, man. Like, inside the stadium and outside the stadium, there were protesters. So it's all my community. This is my Desi community, right? And when everything's filing out, you guys get this. They were arguing. Everyone's arguing with each other. They're yelling at each other. Cops are trying to break it up in between two people. And I was like, dude, come on, this, this is us. We, we live in the same neighborhoods. You guys probably both work at Google. Yeah. You both weigh 135 pounds. <laughs> right. You both have never fought in your life. And the police officer is like, why are you guys arguing over sweaters? Everyone can have cashmere. <laughs> and they're like, that's the problem. Everyone can't have cashmere. So that was the event. That sounds very intense. I want to ask was if this yeah. was this more or less intense. You went and you spoke oh. before Congress. Yeah. Um, you uh, you addressed the uh, student loan crisis. Yes. And yeah. uh, was it uh, was it uh, Maxine Waters who Maxine asked Waters you? She yeah. invited you. Yeah. And so what was the experience of speaking before Congress? Well, I was I was kind of shocked because I was like, is this where we've gotten? Yeah. Right. Like if we need to move the needle on an issue you have to call up a comedian. <laughs> right, yeah. He's like, oh, man, the opioid epidemic is out of control. You know who can solve this? <laughs> Gilbert Godfrey. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see what Gilbert's doing, and maybe we can get this thing through. But look, I I've watched one-hour dramas on TV. Like, I thought Congress was going to be hot, sexy, sure. witty banter, 
you know, affairs in the air. Not, it was like the DMV in there. Yeah. Just like gray lighting, you show up, they give you a Dixie cup and hand you a men's health from 2014. <laughs> when I was in Congress testifying, C-SPAN didn't get this, but in the corner, like where Fred is, I saw a mouse trap with cheese. <laughs> I was like, dude, Trump is right. There are rats in this building. <laughs> yeah. It's so low end though, right? Yeah. It's just like brown. Yeah, it's really not. It's really not hot. And, and the, the, like, the shot of the congressman and then the shot of the person testifying is always very dramatic, but every time they take a no. wide shot, You're it like, just You're like, oh, looks... this is an open mic. Yeah. Three people are here. All yes. the seats are empty. Because they just, people file in, they ask you five minutes questions, and yeah. then they just vamoose, right? They do their five, and then they leave. Yeah. And I stayed there the entire four hours. No bathroom breaks. I, I thought that's what you're they supposed to do. They don't give you bathroom breaks? No, and Maxine Waters told me at the end, she's like, you should have asked. I'm like, you really wanted me to be like, mm, Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Waters, can I, get, can I get the cube with the bathroom key? Yeah. Uh, did you have student debt uh, crisis? Did I, you have loans? I did. I'm lucky. Yeah. I'm lucky. I did not have student debt. You know, I have immigrant parents, and they forced me to live at home. So I don't have crippling <laughs> student debt. Yeah. I have crippling emotional debt. Oh, sure, of yeah, course. And yeah, and Congress has yet to do anything about yeah. that. Likely to never to be up. repaid. Uh, hey, man, it's always such a pleasure Thank to see you. you. Can't wait for your show to be back in Thanks, November. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Thank you, man. Awesome.